Hey everybody, welcome to the Toddcast Podcast. I'm your host, Todd Basinger. So you guys said that you don't believe in God. Does that mean that you think it's just like lights out at the end of all of it? No, I mean, I don't... Okay, so I'm agnostic, so I don't believe in organized religion. <laughs> I believe that there's something out there, like, like people are like, oh, the Big Bang, that's what created everything. Like, well, what the fuck created the Big Bang? Like, it just makes my mind just go... Phew. I think we're all in a computer simulation. Ooh, like the Matrix. Yeah. Not really, but that's what I'm going with. I don't know. I I think we're just It's just it kinda sucks to think that when we're dead, we're dead. Like that means pretty much means life is meaningless. Mm-hmm. But yeah. what would be worse torture than just being alive forever? Just having to deal with everything forever. I don't know. I that's like one of the biggest punishments on Black Mirror. Is they make people live forever. They just trap them in some fucking horrible world. No, but... Do you believe okay. God? I do. Yeah. Are you like an uh, organized religion guy? I'm one, of, I'm, one of those, I'm one of those Christians. Ooh. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> well, I'm, Luther. I'm, I'm, I'm one of those. Methodist. Um, I don't... So I, do don't, you, do you, I don't care about denomination. Do you agree really with don't. me that it's fucked up that people can talk shit about organized religion and well specifically christianity and totally get away scot-free and that's like not a big deal and everyone just kind of laughs at it but then Um, if you talk about like specific groups of people if you talk about like gay people it's super offensive or if you talk about muslims it's super offensive if that's the case yeah if there's a double standard but also i'm talking about christians and everything is fine yeah yeah if if there's a double standard then that's that's just not yeah that, that's just a poor taste. <laughs> but I have no problem with uh, Christians being made fun of in any sense. I think everyone way. should be able to make, be made fun of. Oh, of like, course, honestly. yeah. So, yeah, I don't think anything is off limits. It, de- it depends on what the joke is. but yeah. Or what the like purpose behind the joke is. But there isn't anything that I would say is like, no, you aren't allowed to joke about that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it is... It's, I don't know. I'm not an easily annoyed person, so it isn't really annoying when you close people soon, just Randy. like. About a half hour. Okay. Awesome. Sweet. Thank you. Um, but it is it is a little bit annoying when it's so constant to where I don't to where nothing else is heard, you know? Yeah. I make fun of it because I was raised Catholic. That's sure. The reason. <laughs> it's just eighteen well, Catholic, years of. But yeah, like Catholicism will, like that'll ruin a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> like it, the when it's forced, especially. You know okay, well, I so, can't. I can't imagine the feeling of like Catholic or Jewish guilt. Like my one of my yeah. favorite thing with the Catholic. Sorry, is a quote from uh, Dogma. It's uh, when he talks about is like well, I, I I can't believe in the faith. I I can't understand why you believe in something that makes you mourn your faith. Because mm-hmm. the Catholics, everything you do is just wrong. Like you, yeah. you you should be you know not celebrating your faith. You should be you know mourning your faith. Yeah. And I just I can't stand that. Like yeah. I always thought faith was something you need to worship mm-hmm. and just you know be excited about it. Just be like oh yeah you know like black churches. Yeah, <laughs> that's a fucking celebration right there. Yeah. Or uh, that's an in, that's an interesting thing. Is like, watch Jesus Camp, everybody. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? On Netflix. Yeah, okay. yeah that's that's a weird show. Man. So um, good. Yeah, I don't understand. I feel like people who are Christians and then like just hate everything. I don't understand. Like that that seems weird to me. Um and it seems contradictory. Yeah. And hypocritical. To be, to be Christian and be like yeah. fuck the gays and But I also think like I also think that Christians and He's bye, out. Guys. Bye. I'm I also think that Christians are held to a standard that is unrealistic as far as like what they can and can't get away with. As far as, like, what is considered hypocrisy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, because anybody else is totally fine with being a hypocrite because it's like, oh, I'm just, 
I'm just trying to learn and I did something wrong. But if a Christian does something wrong, it's immediately a, a, a score against them as far yeah. as uh, what yeah. validating or disproving what they believe. Fucks you up. I mean, like, when I was a kid, I thought that, because I was Catholic growing up, I mm -hmm. thought that masturbating was, like, horrible, mm -hmm. you know, and I was taught that or whatever. And I thought that I was an awkward... See ya, man. You taking off? Later. All right. I thought that because I masturbated, that's why I was awkward, mm. like socially awkward. Mm -hmm. So I would like not do it for a long time to try to be like, oh no, if I just don't do it, then I'll be able to talk to girls and stuff and I'll be able to like not sure. be awkward in social situations. And then I found out like a bunch of people that I knew that were super like confident people also masturbated and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> It didn't like I don't know why, but I associated that with like oh a anyone who's awkward it's because they masturbate, mm. and then like I had to learn eventually that it's like no it's just something that people do. Yeah, so, that's interesting. You masturbate. Man? You had to learn to be the master. <laughs> no, no, no. You know that's what I that, like I said earlier. That's what I thought. You know, bisexual man. You know, switching hands. You know. <laughs> I I didn't make that joke up. Ronnie Dangerfield. Really. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't make that joke up. Ronnie Dangerfield. I grew up. Yeah, I, I didn't really know any Catholics growing up. Uh, I grew up going to a Brethren church, um, which the Church of the Brethren is very much like... The focus is more about relationships, and it's more uh, love-focused. So it was more about um, learning like how to be those, a good person. One of those hippie Christian places. In a way, like we were all in jeans and work shirts and things like that like everybody in the congregation oh, that's that shit that's the shit i hated too yeah yeah is going into the catholic mass if you wore jeans you would get the fucking stink eye from yeah. everybody no uh everything in the brethren church is very like loose and just kind of like you're trying to you're you're there to learn how to be a a better person and you're there to learn how to love each other and how to create relationships and bond and it's a really good um, loving experience. What but then, the fuck was that when I grew up? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yeah, but then I started going to a Baptist church, which is very much about. Um, it's very, um, and I still go to a Baptist church. Of it, it's very much more like this is what the Bible says. We're not going to tell you what the opinion is on that. But this is what it says, this is what it means, this is what the historical context was it was to it. And it's much more of like a history lesson of the Bible and then teaching you what that says and what that means through cross-referencing and all of these different things. And so it's very much, and not every Baptist church is that way, but the one that I go to is much more just, we're going to teach you about what the Bible is. Yeah. Um, and so it was more of an education. And so I'm very happy that I've had both of those backgrounds of like, First learning how to love and how to be a good person, but then mm -hmm. learning what this book says. Um, yeah. But I don't, I don't claim myself to be a denomination. Because as soon as you start to like label yourself as a denomination, it becomes very petty very quickly. Yeah, you get looped into... It's like labeling yourself anything. It's labeling yeah. yourself a feminist, then everyone yeah. associates all the... like like the worst end of feminism all the crazy shit that those people yeah. do they go oh you're one of those people or mm -hmm. you know I, I believe in black lives matter or something and then they go oh you're one of those crazy you know you want to kill cops or something and you get mm -hmm. looped in with like the worst or even if you're catholic oh you you care you don't care that they're raping kids yeah yeah so yeah i understand not labeling yourself that makes yeah sense. it's it just creates unnecessary rifts in a situation where there shouldn't be rifts. Like, I wish that more people were comfortable with just talking about that sort of thing, but a lot of people just aren't, you know? I feel like Catholics are just, it, it doesn't teach you how to, like, like you're saying, it, the, it teaches you how to, like, create relationships with people and stuff. You mm -hmm. see, to me, being Catholic just teaches you how to, like, judge other people that are not as, quote-unquote, pious as you, or, you know, someone yeah. who drinks too much you look down at them yeah. or someone who wears fucking you know or chews gum in church you have to like you know yell at them and shit and it's like i don't know yeah you're just you're looking down at the people who don't live as 
you know, pious. It's a holier than thou sort of attitude throughout the entire thing. Yeah. It just kind of rubs me the wrong way. Because half these people are fucking dickheads. <laughs> half the people, I know, like, I know them. I know them outside of church, and they stand there and act like, they, you know, everything is, like, they're these great people. It's like, mm -hmm. no, you're, you're fucking yeah. douche. And a lot of... This is a very generalized statement, but a lot of what the cash the cash the Catholic religion um, kind of is based around is based around you rather than the actual religion itself. So yeah. what I mean by that is like it, it's more about you do this and then you do this and then you do this and that's how it works. Mm -hmm. And it's more of like a structure than it is actually like humbling yourself before something. And so that creates a lot of like, I'm making this happen for me. Yeah. Which. You don't appreciate the people who help you to get to that point. Yeah. There, there's less, um, there's not a whole lot of humility in that format. Yeah. Unfortunately, and I I know plenty of Catholics who are perfectly lovely people, and that's that's a pretty broad blanket statement. But, but um, it, yeah, I can definitely get down that road where all of a sudden you're like, you know, the holier than thou person who yeah. can do no wrong, and I I think that contributes a lot of times to like child molestation and shit because you're mm -hmm. just, you, it's like it like you said, it's focused around the person. Yeah. So you, it's it's a total narcissistic like ego thing where all of a sudden you become, you know, like I'm I'm this great holy person or whatever. And it can if yeah if it's if it's con with certain it depends on the person. And yeah. If certain people you can go down that road pretty quick in anything really. Mm -hmm. but. And it's also like yeah, some people just need. Uh, to have perspective and also some people just need um to learn how to have uh, empathy uh -huh. i think um and if you are kind of programmed in a structure where you don't have the ability to empathize with somebody and all you see is what's wrong with them instead of trying to see either how to help them or how to relate to them, then that creates somebody that's very, yeah, narcissistic and attacking and judgmental. And that's You're describing me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, it's, um... I don't know, I, I feel like I have... But I don't think you're socially that way. No, I care about people and yeah. stuff. I just... I don't know, the whole thing with, like being or getting annoyed with people who get offended by stuff is because I think I've seen the other side of it where it's like if everyone could be in the same room everyone from like every denomination of religion or whatever every race and we can all just give each other shit and make fun of each other and have a good time like there's a, a kinship that can form from that you know if you could be like you black motherfucker and then some guy can be oh you fucking Irish piece of shit go farm some potatoes like it's it, it creates sort of a you know, like you're you're on the same level, your peers, because you can give each other shit, and no one's afraid of offending each other. It's just it's sort of a beautiful thing that you know everyone is uh, just sort of on the same level. I don't know how to describe it better than that, but I, I've seen that happen with like the the green room with Paul Provenza, like a, a couple of those episodes where shit gets like really racial and you know like really personal and stuff like that but at the end of the day like everyone's able to come out of it uh okay and stuff and i don't know yeah i feel like but i, I could see how people could perceive that as like oh you think everyone should make fun of each other you're you don't have empathy or you're like a you know shitty person it's like no i just think that if we can let go of our egos for a little bit and just fuck around, then everyone will be happy. You know, comedy can sort of bring people together. But That's the key, is like uh, abandoning egotistical thinking, which is really difficult. Like, I'm... I think that... Sorry to cut you off again, but I think yeah, that's no. what bothers me about, like, getting offended by something. That's like a total ego move. It's like, you said this thing that I cannot hear. This is unacceptable. And it's like, well, who the fuck are you? Like, just relax, you know? Like, have a good time. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, it's interesting. The the other thing that I it's it's hard because I I also know people that operate in different ways that are uh, equally as successful at just creating a sustainable happy life around them um, for other people around them. Um, but for me personally. I don't know. I, I honestly can't remember the last time that I got angry. Like I don't get angry, and so and part of that stems from my just a decision to not be angry. Yeah. Most of it stems from that of me just genuinely one day um, going, why why would I choose to be angry? Yeah. And it really is a choice. Like, horrible things can happen to you at any given time, but at the end of the day, you choose whether or not you let those things uh, cause anger. Mm -hmm. um, and however you deal with that, some people deal with it, um, like you were saying, by kind of making fun of it. Um, like, there, there is a passage in the Bible that says that the, the devil cannot stand mockery. And... <laughs> That's true. Like, if if you make fun of something that's, that's that you're officially my favorite Bible verse. <laughs> if if you find something that uh, <laughs> you're afraid of, or that um, or that you find horrible or terrifying, or that is essentially what the verse is saying is is uh, evil, because the devil is evil incarnate. Of if you see something that you see is evil and you mock it in a way that is taking air out of it, it can't survive in that environment. And some people uh, solve things that way, and other people uh, solve them by analyzing it and trying to figure it out and trying to see what is causing it, and et cetera. Like, whatever your path is to trying to figure out what, how to diffuse things, um, uh -huh. it can only be good. Um, but at the end of the day, it is ultimately a choice. Yeah, I think there's a lot of power to that because that's something that I've been dealing with. I used to be, I used to have a lot of anger towards. It's kind of what I was saying about how the reason I got into comedy was to. I don't. I think I had a lot of anger towards like the quote unquote popular people or just people who seem to be socially well adjusted. It was like, why the fuck can they be happy and I can't? And I, I, it manifested itself in a lot of anger and stuff like that. Sure. Until I just started... I mean, comedy has helped me a lot because I have something to focus on. I'm like, all right, don't worry about that shit. Just focus on, you know, practicing this joke or writing this joke or doing, you know, just for the next open mic, whatever, just focus on that, keep your head down, and don't worry about what the fuck other people are doing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that decision to just stop giving a shit yeah. has helped a lot, because there, there have been, I mean, there's past relationships that still bother me and stuff, but I just mm -hmm. had to be like, look, I just have to let the little ball of hate go and just be myself and not fucking worry about what yeah. they're doing. That, that, was, that was part of it. Um... It, my my decision kind of came out through like unfortunate circumstances, and it, it was the moment that it happened was me dealing with the worst thing that I had dealt with up until that moment, and then afterwards, after I had kind of gotten through it, me going, really, what am I like? What am I upset about? That's I'm upset because this thing happened. I'm upset because. Uh, it changed this, and I'm upset because now I don't have this. Yeah. But the reality of the situation is those are all things that are now in my past, so how are they still... Why would I let them still affect me? Yeah. As well as, are they really that big of a deal mm -hmm. in the grand scheme of things? Um, and that logic kind of consoled me in a way that I had never really felt before and ever since then like that that moment was like three or four years ago yeah yeah four years almost four years ago and it was I haven't been angry since then 
That's pretty impressive. You don't even get angry at like people who cut you off in traffic and shit like that. Well, I get frustrated. Like I, uh, frustration yeah. is different, but like it, but not like actually angry now. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, that's. I mean, that's something that I used to go to therapy in high school, and that was one thing that <clears throat> my therapist told me. Like, you have to interrogate the thoughts that sort of come into your head, and if you have a thought, like. A lot of times before a comedy show, I start go to, going down that road of like, you're gonna have, like, what happens if you bomb and everyone is judging you and all this other shit? And you just have to look at that thought and go, like, okay, is this helping in any way? Like, is this thought useful mm-hmm. at all? Yeah. Like, is there any reason for this thought to be in my head? And if the case is no, then just get rid of it. Like, yeah. fuck it. it. Don't pay yeah. attention to the shit that's, you know, useless. Same thing with like, stuff in the past that bothers you it's like if it, there's you're, you're not going to change it worrying about it isn't going to make it any better so you basically just have to let it go yeah a lot of our what we look at as negative um emotions or reactions come from us letting something linger rather than extinguishing mm-hmm. it yeah. um or uh or may or maybe more appropriately, just um, uh, encouraging it or... Um, Giving it legs, basically. Yeah, it's feeding to, it. Yeah, it's able to move around in your head and yeah. bother you. You just have to say, no, you get the fuck out right now. Get yeah. out. The, lo- the longer that you um, uh, humor something mm-hmm. and allow it to kind of... Because uh, eventually it will... Um, create a stronghold within you and it becomes much harder to get rid of yeah but the long so the longer that you allow it to just passively stay within you uh the harder it's going to be to shake and the more likely it'll become a piece of you but if you just confront it up front and be perfectly honest about it with yourself up front of this is a thing that i'm thinking right now now i need to get rid of this um Mm -hmm. It's really, yeah. it's, it may sound like an oversimplification, but it really is that simple. It's not easy to do or easy to learn, but it, it, in its essence, it is that simple. Yeah. I credit that with uh, me getting better at comedy mm. is basically my ability to shut out the negative emotions and the stuff that's not helpful and just focus on, okay, you tried this joke, it didn't work. You know, can I salvage this? Yes or no? Whatever. You know, just just yeah. I'm building towards the next, you know, the next show, and, and I'm just getting. I'm continuing to get better, and that like getting being able to f- sort of mitigate the negative mental, you know, obstacles that I've had. I think is a big part of me getting better because that was that was a really difficult thing to get over when I first started because that I would like I was afraid to read in class in college when I first started doing comedy and like super social anxiety and stuff like that so just being able to like push push out the noise and focus on what's important what's in front of me just living in the moment and stuff that's that's basically the reason because I don't think I've gotten that much better at writing since I started doing comedy it's just been mental you know Figuring out the mental aspect of it has, has helped a lot, definitely. Sure. Yeah, and alongside that, like, I still, I, I have, and I say this, like, very, <laughs> with, with a grain of salt, I struggle with depression. Like, I know people that struggle with it way, way worse than I do. And it's yeah. not like me saying that feels I, I, I feel guilty saying that because I know how much some people struggle with depression. Yeah. But I, I go through, like, valleys of depression semi-regularly as well as uh, I have my own kind of mundane anxiety that I have to deal with. Like, I still have those things, but they're much more um, benign than they ever used to be. Yeah. It definitely helps learning what to focus on and what not to focus on. So as someone who is religious, mm-hmm. you know, we should wrap this up so uh-huh. it's probably getting close to it. But as someone who is religious, do you feel uh, 
I don't know, it's like a, a negative emotions towards people who are not religious, or can you see where they're coming from, or do you, uh, are you one of those people that it's sort of like the lost sheep, like eventually one day they'll find, you know, God or whatever, or are you uh, able to deal with the fact that some people just don't believe and that's, you know, their thing? Like what? Like what do you think happens to the people who don't believe? I guess would be <laughs> a different thing, um, a different way of putting it. So, I I do believe, I do personally believe in hell, and I do believe in heaven. Um, so in that aspect, so you're saying I'm going to hell. Uh, <laughs> potentially, I don't know. Um, but I, I'm not going to condemn. It's not my job to condemn you to hell or to say you're you are. I never got that. Like people that were just like you are going to hell. Like it's not yeah. your job to condemn somebody to hell. But at the same time, I do see. I do think that that kind of lost flock thing does exist. But at the same, I'm not offended by people who think differently than me or don't have the same viewpoint as me. Because why would they? Yeah. Like that. That's that seems ridiculous. Um, and also, I haven't always been a Christian. So at one point, I was not a Christian. So, yeah. like that's. So do you do you understand the logic behind it? Oh, of, of why course. Why someone would not believe? Yeah, of course. Like I. And kidding. that's that's something as well that I think a lot of Christians miss, um, or maybe not miss, but uh, potentially is hindering them from uh, being accessible to people that aren't oh, of definitely. their same mindset yeah. is they go, they, they don't put anything, I was actually just having a conversation with my parents, because my parents are very much more like uh, straight-laced, uh, you, what you would consider like a typical Christian. Uh -huh. um, and I was having this conversation with them the other night of like, I, if you cannot put a viewpoint, uh, if you cannot intake a viewpoint uh, that is contrary to what yours is, uh, because you have fear that it will taint what you believe, I don't have a lot of confidence in what you believe. Yeah. Like, if you, if you cannot wrap your mind around, like, uh, and the example that I gave them, and this is a very, like, drastic example, but... I've read, and I would recommend people to read Mein Kampf, which is <laughs> Hitler's uh, yeah, yeah. works. Um, <laughs> and it's so contrary to what most of any of us would ever believe or think or... Uh, uh, but reading that gives you at least a little bit of perspective into the mind of somebody that is so far away from what you believe. Nice. Oh, nice. Totally. But uh, it, it, it allows you to kind of see the mindset of somebody who's completely 180 from what I would ever think or what I would ever right. feel or what I would ever desire. And I think that that can only do good as far as you are, one, establishing uh, the ability to, in some way or another have empathy with something that you would never be able to have empathy with because you now have a better understanding of it mm -hmm. as well as you now have uh, solidified what you believe by going, okay, I've seen this thing. Uh, do I go with that or do I go with the thing that I still, do I still believe what I believe? Right. Um, and a lot of Christians are like, well, you can't do that because you might stop believing what you believe. And I, well, if you my, believe it strong enough, yeah, it's and not going to happen. Obviously, yeah, I think, and I, I've never gotten the question like, <laughs> do, you think, do you think that you're right in being a Christian? And my response has always been, well, it, I wouldn't be a Christian if I didn't think I was right. <laughs> Like that—that yeah. that seem, that seems weird to me. Of like, if I if I didn't think that I was right, but I also, again, to quote the Bible, I'm gonna to quote yeah, I'm gonna para <laughs> I'm gonna paraphrase. Um, but Paul essentially says, uh, if if everything, and Paul is one of the most uh, highest regardest, highest regardest. 
Regarded. <laughs> Regarded. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you can... T- <laughs> I'm, what I'm about to say is super credible. <laughs> But uh, the highest regarded um, uh, Christian philosophers and disciples in the Bible, um, and his statement is, uh, if, I, if I'm wrong in everything that I believe in, in God, in Christ, in everything that is the Christian walk is wrong, then I'm a fool, but I am okay with that. And I think, I think that, and I think that mindset is really healthy, and I think a lot of people miss that mm-hmm. of, yes, consi- keep believing what you believe in, but also acknowledge the fact that, yeah, I could be wrong, but don't, that shouldn't hinder what you believe. Yeah. Um, but it, it's of your benefit and it is of the proper mindset to still acknowledge the fact that you are flawed and have the ability to be wrong Mm -hmm. um so yeah that's where i come from that that's a pretty level-headed uh (laughs) christian uh way of living i mean it's it's definitely different than what i grew up around yeah but uh i don't know i can't get past the the magic and the, (laughs) the miracles and shit like that like i don't know I just, you know, it's 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 the. Uh, it, that's a whole other podcast. With, yeah, that's a whole other podcast. <laughs> just with the, you know, with the extraordinary claims you need to, or you know, I want to see extraordinary evidence type mm-hmm. of thing. Um, and also just going by, you know, what I think is more likely, and I think it's more likely that we're just kind of out here improvising Fair and enough. trying to, you know, figure out what we decide is trying to establish some sort of moral uh, foundation on how to live our life, and that's why religion has been uh, adopted by so many people, because it gives you the answers to, you know, how you're supposed to live. And I don't necessarily know that there is a correct way to live or anything like that. I think there's certainly, I don't want to call it incorrect ways to live, but I think there's some stuff that you shouldn't be doing, like you shouldn't be, you know, fucking doing heroin and or, you know, any, like, you shouldn't just be trying to fuck a bunch of chicks all day. Or, you know, like, being the party person or whatever. Like, there's, you know, you need moderation sure. at some point, which I think is a good teaching that, you know, Christians have. But, I don't know. I definitely think the empathy thing is missing in a lot of politics. Mm-hmm. I think uh, the whole right-left divide thing, there's definitely... Because yeah. you, you find... Even, like, the most obscene, like, white supremacist person, mm-hmm. it seems like they're sort of, like, treated like these grand heretics or whatever, and, like, there's no real effort to empathize with, like, why do you, why the fuck would you hate a yeah. person that has a different skin color? Like, that's fucking mm-hmm. ridiculous. Like, why would you do that? Or, you know, what caused a person to get to that point? Or, you know, what caused, even on, like, a lesser scale, there's a bunch of hatred, you know, between both sides. Like, uh, you know, the left hates the right. You know, you're a Republican. You are you don't care about people or whatever. And, like, there's no real... The dialogue seems to be missing nowadays between both sides, and that kind of bothers me. Yeah. It just bums me out, yeah. really. I don't really have a dog in a fight either way. Yeah. It's all fake. Like, there's nothing... It, and it's, it's, it's the goddamn lizard people who run the <laughs> fucking country, and they have these Democrats and these Republicans, yeah. and they have them fight against each other while they control. No, the whole like left-right thing is so manufactured and fake. Yeah. Like everybody on every side, like you're thinks a liberal, of, that you 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 like killing babies. Yeah. It's like, thinks whoa, so whoa, many whoa. different things. Yeah. Like, it's not... I'm for killing babies, by the way. <laughs> there is not a linear line of thinking, like, on yeah, I, on like, either side. It's, it's one thing. so scattered, but yet we have only two sides that you can choose from. Um, it was really... Uh, Jim Gaffigan had a quote of when he was asked about if he believed in God. He said, yeah, I believe in God. I have... And he is he is a Catholic. Uh-huh. He, he, is a, yeah. a, a, he is a Christian. Um, but he, his quote was, uh, 
Um, yeah, I, I've had all of these, uh, I've had too much mercy and too much passion and too much, um, love shown to me for me to not be a Republican. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it was so funny and, and, and painfully accurate. Yeah. Like I'm not a Repu- I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I don't care about parties. Really I don't care about matter. sides because there really are no sides. The sides are something that has been put up. We're told that there are sides, so we choose which one that we're on. Yeah. But in reality, we all think our own things, and we all have our own feelings. Not everybody does. Some people just think and feel what they've been told to. But uh, That's very true. most of us, uh, a lot of us just have have our own viewpoints, and they're not linear to what everybody else's are. Yeah, there's a... Um famous, I don't know if you've heard of him, he's a sort of a famous uh, philosopher type of dude. Uh, he's a neuro, not, not a neurosurgeon, neurobiologist, Sam Harris, mm-hmm. who uh, is like a famous sort of atheist, yeah. uh, you know, talking head guy. And he said, like, why should it be, why should a person's stance on abortion be predictive of their view on government, you know, yeah. the size of government or their view on gay marriage or something like yeah. that? Like, why is it that so many people who are against abortion are also against gay marriage are also for smaller government are also like right down the line of, you know, pro guns, you know, yeah. like right down the line of everything Republicans believe? Yeah, I and and I think a lot of it comes down to the fact that they've been told. A lot of people have just been told that you have to believe this. If you believe this thing, then you have to believe this thing, and if you believe that thing, then you have to believe this thing because that's what we are and that's what we do, and, which is unfortunate. Um, and I'm not saying everybody is like a sheeple and can't think for themselves, but I think that <laughs> I think that a lot of people just it's easier not to think for yourself. Oh, absolutely. So I think a lot of people just do that. Which is bizarre to me. <laughs> I've never been of that yeah. mindset, but like, I don't know. But yeah. So, what motivates you then? Final point, and then we'll cut this shit off. Sounds good. What motivates me? Like what? It, like in know, life, is, or is it the promise of heaven? Is it the experience you have on earth? Is it you know like what? If you get up in the morning and do something productive or good, what is the, you know, hmm. what, what is the impetus behind that? I Interesting. Guess. Um, I feel like my my motivation stems from the fact that I have been given the blessing that is to be alive, um, and so I feel like it would be a waste of that blessing to not utilize it. it. Closing soon? Okay. All right. What's that? Getting pretty close. Okay. Sounds good. We're about to wrap up. Yeah, we're about to wrap up. No problem. Thanks for letting us know. Um, But yeah, I think that is ultimately my... At least that's what I hope my motivation is. And sometimes it's not that. But if I had to like pinpoint what I want my motivation to be and what I uh, aspire it to be, it would be that I've been given a blessing um, and I'm, I've been instructed to use that blessing. Uh, and well, that's what I try the, to do. Aside from the instruction part, that's pretty much verbatim. Here we have an atheist and a, a Christian who essentially believe the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I tend to think that nothing really has any meaning and there's no point of anything. So if I'm alive and I have an opportunity to just do some shit, then why not take advantage of it? You know, why not? If Like, if there's no meaning, then either you just accept that and live a miserable life or you create meaning for yourself and you decide this is what I'm going to do I'm going to help these people or I'm going to pursue this passion or whatever and you create you have to you know you don't have to but you know for me I like I, I want to do something with the fact that I'm alive mm-hmm. otherwise you just like kill yourself but what the fuck was the point of that sure you know 
I'll let cancer take me one day. <laughs> yeah. Cancer or liver failure, whatever <laughs> comes first. So basically, your your motivation stems from. It's well, very, I'm it, well, I'm here, so I might as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much, it's sort of a. So yeah, that's similar. A laissez-faire uh, version of your. Yeah. And then mine stems like, from I've been given this. Yeah. Like specifically. And I don't necessarily, I want to preface that, uh, I, I don't necessarily think that when, when I say that, uh, some people think that that comes off as uppity of like me saying, my life is a blessing. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, but, and I'm not saying that my life is a blessing, I'm saying the gift of life is a blessing. And if I've been given this gift, I should, uh, I feel that I've been instructed to use it. When you say blessing, my version of blessing is someone who's not really religiously inclined. Mm -hmm. My version of blessing is uh, a statistical improbability, mm -hmm. like based on how many sperm were in my dad's nuts at the time so when more I was amazing. conceived. Just statistically, it's fucking incredible that I'm here. Yeah. So I, I, I get tripped out on that of like, I'll, I'll be looking at now, somebody I, and and I'll look at them and I go, there's you're, a, you're looking at something right now and you are thinking something and yeah. you're analyzing something. And the no, things that are going on in my head are not the, my own world, but they're also going, they're also, there's also a, like a separate world going on in your head. You know what really Which trips me out is when there's a Belvedere oasis on the way home from mm -hmm. Dubuque to Chicago where you can sit and eat your... It's like a place where, you know, you can park your car and get, like, Sabaro or whatever. Sure, yeah. And you can sit in this big window, and there's a highway. You know, you know it's Highway 20. Okay. It's three lanes across on both sides, and you can sit there and eat your food and watch all these fucking cars. Yeah, yeah. And you just think, like, every single one of those people has their own life, has their yeah. own worries, their own insecurities, their own friends, mm -hmm. their own dreams... Mm -hmm. And like I'm just the fucking guy at the window, yeah. And like it's so bizarre that all of these people are here, and you know you're just a little bit, a little tiny part of it, basically. I'm totally with you. It trips me out every time that I think, it. and I think about that a lot. Of like every single person that I see throughout my day is seeing every other person throughout their day and having a completely different reaction to them, yeah. and that. That's mind blowingly amazing. Like it's, and I see it's that, beyond that my me, understanding. To me, that makes me feel insignificant, which is almost a blessing to me because I'm like, well, if no one gives a shit, then I might as well <laughs> go out and do something. You know, it, 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 in a hundred years, no one's gonna remember that I was here. So why not just go try? Yeah, you know. And, and to, I to love, a religion person, a religious person, it might be a different motivation, but. Well, the feeling of insignificance is also a feeling of, uh, in some ways, humility. Of, mm -hmm. like, looking up at the stars and seeing all of them and going, wow, I really am just, like, I'm nothing. And to some people that's disheartening, but uh, to me that's a feeling of, like, but I'm here anyway. And that's pretty great good place to end it. You've been yeah, watching a very fucking weird episode of the Top Cats podcast. Yeah, it is. It's been a real deep conversation. We took a complete <laughs> 180 from our last uh, like two shows where this we're just true. making dick jokes and mm -hmm. shit like that. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed it.